Hello, everybody, and welcome to the UK LC. We have a doozy of a day coming up for you. We have one game. It's a tiebreaker game between Envision and London, and it, it's a, it's a, it's basically side selection. These two have played each other on Sunday, but we had to do it because yeah. we have to make sure that it's fair. But I'm Hip Brain. I'm joined by Jamada, and a big shout out to our sponsors, Curry PC World Gaming. Jamada, a bit of an interesting one, really. Um, it is purely a side selection game for an actual game that matters. This game's ma yeah. like meaning it, is pretty low right now. It's kind of weird, right? Uh, I think especially in the context of the meta, I don't necessarily think there is at the moment a side which is stronger or weaker. But of course, for the sake of competitive integrity, that's why we're having this game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously we just had the, the lineups on our, our screen. If you notice, uh, it's been a couple of substitutions here and there for reasons you can go and find out yourself. Um, but it definitely can impact Envision a lot um, because generally speaking, they have looked like one of the best teams in the UKLC if we're just looking at the second round. Yeah. Uh, so having a team, having a middle lane sub out at effectively playoff time and then you've only got this week to practice like three days to practice it's going to be tough uh so i think today is definitely going to be a bit of a potential preview for the matchup as well uh but yeah i am looking to see how envision exactly are going to adapt and if london necessarily changed their game plan because i think the last time these two met the focus was actually heavily around the mid lane yeah i i'm genuinely curious whether or not they do look to target faded in the mid lane and just play around that because Beely has we were asked to do uh it was for lucent i believe for their for their show you know, the, yeah. our, our tier lists, and I put Beely at the top of my mid lane tier list. I was asked for three names, and Beely was the top mid laner for me. His LeBlanc performances, which has been banned pretty consistently on him in the latter half of this split, have been stellar. They've been incredible. So I wonder whether or not we just see some mid lane bans from the side of London, and they just look to get Beely unlocked on the map. The Xin Zhao is going to get taken away. The Graves is going to get taken away. And now we'll see what the next, what the next bans are going to be. Yeah, and Vision actually have been prioritizing the Graves a little bit. Uh, I am still kind of wondering whether we're going to see Graves slip back into the mirror or not. Because, again, 2 AD, very powerful, I think, you know. Uh, he does fit well, considering a lot of compositions at the moment in the mirror are very short-ranged. Uh, so Envision do seem to like that pick, but London are going to move that away on top of the Ziggs, which we know Fuyu does love. Uh, and we've seen Ziggs pop off way too many times here at the UKLC. It feels like quite a few of our teams in the middle of the pack in particular weren't too great at closing out. So pick yeah. like Ziggs, delaying the game. Uh, you don't want to have something like that. And uh, from the side of Envision, I think the LeBlanc ban and the Zinzel ban make a whole bunch of sense. Trying to remove any agency that you can away from this London mid jungle. Well, there goes the Viego. So the Gwen and the Lucian are open. They're kind of the two big champions I'm looking at. I know there's a bunch of really strong ones left open, like the Aurelia, but we'll see what the trade off is going to be. Is Akers going to pick up this Gwen? To me, I feel like he's not a massive Gwen player, but you guys could be wrong there. I actually feel like, if anything, London would potentially prioritize the Lucian higher. Yeah. If we're looking at just those two picks as the options for London, there are still obviously other options. I beg your pardon. Uh, but yeah, there you go. We're going to see the Gwen come in. Uh, and now I look towards Envision because I say it feels the previous iteration of Envision. This is a Lucian plus X rotation. But yeah. does Faded play, uh, you know, Lucian? Does he play these aggressive uh, types of mid laners? Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, Thresh is also up, so we could see, you know, something like Thresh plus the jungler. Uh, loads of strong rotation options here for red side uh, when it comes to Envision. Uh, and even DBL's picks have come in in the first rotation too, so we'll have to see. Oh, Diana's set could be really nice oh, yeah. here. They actually just go for the Diana Tristana, still keeping that flexible. The set can go top lane or support if they want to pick it up. And we'll see what London decide to rotate here in this in this phase. I'm assuming we'll probably see maybe jungle mid, jungle AD. Um, you can quite happily leave that support pool open for a little bit longer, unless they really want to prioritize something like a Nautilus. But Jeff 8, actually, yeah, Fresh is open. You literally just mentioned Fresh is open, and now I'm like, yeah, Fresh is pretty good here. So, might just be Fresh Jungle. Uh, not Fresh Jungle, like Fresh Plus Jungler. But then again, you've got the Gwen. So, no name can put that in the in the jungle role as well. Yeah, considering you've got the Gwen. There's a lot of open ends here. You could just lock in your AD carry. There's no threat of having to deal with Ziggs. Tristan is already on the table. The worst case is Old Stone lo Old Stone's locked in the Nautilus, and that can be a bit of a pain in the backside to actually deal with. But quite frankly, I'll be okay. But Mankey's not really lent on a lot of these hyper carries, it feels like, for London. We've seen him more on utility picks more than anything else. Uh, so Lee Sin is going to come in. I more associate this with no name, so I'm expecting this Lee Sin to be no name. So, of course, the flexibility is still very much there. Yeah. Uh, and now it's over to Envision. I think when you look at this composition right now that London have got, 
you probably just look to, to lock in Nautilus just because it gives you that hard CC, uh, it gives you the setup, and of course, pretty decent matchup in general one to one when you're talking about being able to ultimate the person yeah. who's likely to take that landon. And straight away, a Felios ban could, of course, see another follow up hype carry ban, or even the Varus as well, away from rank is one of the few champions he's paired with the, the Thresh pair. All right, let's see what's going to be coming in next here is going into that burn phase. I can take away the Aphelios. I think that's understandable. And there's a fresh open. These kind of hyper carries that are very low mobility could be problematic. I'm assuming we'll probably see something like a virus as well come out as the Cassidy banned away from Fade. So a bit of target banning coming on here. And I think they're waiting to see kind of what this comp looks like before they look, lock something in for Beely in the mid lane. Obviously, they could put that Lisa in there. They could put the Gwen there as well. So they have a bit of flexibility to work with on that front. Yeah, Probably going to just see a Varus ban. No, they go for the Seraphine. So okay, denying yeah. some of that kind of utility you were talking about on the side of Mankey. Yeah, Mankey, one of the few bottom laners in the league that has played the Seraphine bottom lane. So uh, not too surprised to see that one removed away. Like you said, Mankey for this London team has been more focused around utility. Um, and we did actually see on Twitter he was saying he's been struggling with internet connection. So I actually think that might be why London have decided to put him on sort of utility duty. Uh, but even when we've seen him on the more carry-based champions, he's definitely put in the work. But yeah, yeah. Cassiopeia, another faded champion. Uh, it seems like the focus is going to be there. And I wonder if this is setting up for anything specific, because these are very specific bands when you're talking about mid lane. So yeah. uh, it says to me potentially that No Name might actually be running the Gwen and they want to run another mage in the mid lane uh, if they're banning away things like that. But yet to see DBL going to lock in the Camille. So feeling pretty confident regardless of what matchup he ends up with over Rista Leeson or the Gwen, of course, a little more based around split pushing. So curious to see how Envision are going to round out their comp when it comes to locking in Faded's champion. Uh, because Camille, she's not really the best team fighter, especially when you've got so many of these peel tools. The card on top of that now, Leeson kick, just Thresh existing as a champion. It can be difficult to navigate these fights. Well, I think that means we're probably going to see the Karma in the mid or the top from the side of Beely. Um, so just expecting an AD carry to get picked up here, unless this is support or like Could bot lane up. karma with a fresh. That is potentially an option. It is manky. So, you know, I don't even know what's going on. And we've got two seconds until this comp is finally rounded out. The final pick is going to be the Silas. Silas. So yeah. it is going to be the bot. fresh karma bot lane. Yeah. I mean, again, manky, they've put him on a lot of utility duty so far this split. Uh, and it seems like we will continue with that trend. Silas going to be out in the mid lane. Uh, potentially a risky blind, but maybe they're just taking away from Faded because this is, at least to me, I think the first time I've seen Beely run Silas in the UKLC. I don't think he's run it before this. Uh, and Faded will respond to the rise. So honestly, Silas value here, not too terrible. You've got a couple of very decent lockdown ultimates, uh, a couple of decent mobility ultimates as well. Uh, more burst can come out there. I think London, when it comes to the top side, the skirmishing is going to be really, really powerful. Uh, the bottom lane priority can certainly be theirs, but I feel like when you're talking about Tristan and Nautilus, the kill threat there, you might want to back away. Uh, and on the side of Envision, I think definitely waiting towards six so you can have some of those more easy to execute lockdown tools available because, you know, Rise being able to port over to a side lane where you've got the Camille Armor and the Nautilus, like guaranteed point and click CC, uh, seems very, very powerful. So I'm looking towards level six to start to see Envision be a little more proactive on the side lanes. Well, there we are. The top comps are locked in. Um... Been a little while since seen the rise. I'm curious, curious about how he's going to be able to handle this versus Beely on that pretty aggressive pick like the Silas. Uh, fair few decent ults for him to take away as well. You've also got the uh, the Moonfall. You can also take the Rise ult, which is pretty useful for just team utility. Nautilus ult is pretty nasty. Got, got honestly quite a few pretty solid ultimates for him to steal away on this game. And you know, it's going to really be on to Envision to see how they can kind of handle this because obviously you are playing with a new player. You know, there is no way be of beating around the bush. You're going into playoffs with a brand new mid laner, so it's it's going to be it's going to be also oh important for them to try and you know see how on, on form they're going to be and how they pair up to someone like London because this is the team they're playing against and this could be the last team they play against this split. If they can find the win though, especially in convincing fashion, it'll be a really really big morale boost for the side of Envision. But on the side of London, you know, it feels like they're trying to kind of claw back some of that pride because for the longest time it was it was Resolve and London were our two teams here in the NLC, in the UKLC, sorry. So, you know, for them, they wanted to make that finals and Resolve could just get knocked out by m and as that's the other playoff game we've got. Yeah, and we could realistically see both of our finalists be knocked out in the semifinals. I think Envision, it's going to be about how they adapt in the next couple of days, but if they are able to achieve similar form in the second round robin 
it wouldn't be surprising to see you know Eminem and Vision in the finals. Um, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I definitely look towards you know London to see how how they will do in this game in particular. Because again, bit of a preview, right? Bit of a preview, uh, and we're seeing new picks already come out of a couple of these guys via the Silas, uh, Mankey. I feel like Mankey has registered a common game, but memory doesn't serve me properly and I don't. It's hard with Mankey because he does have a, uh, he he's, does he's, play, he's had a unique champ pool, let's say. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit of an interesting one. We have loaded through into game. This is our only game of the day. It's London versus Envision. It's all to play for. It's not all to play for. It's purely for side selection in game one, but we're doing it anyway. Yeah, but again, even the win here, the mental edge that you can get, well, that's, yeah, I mean, this is what I was talking about in yeah. the, in the pregame. I was like, is it worth potentially giving over a bit of a mental edge or maybe, you know, even kind of going into your game with doubts after losing this game? Yeah. Ultimately, the teams decided that that was, um, that was the case. That's how they feel. And, you know, who am I to say? It might play into their hands. They might have a game one plan that requires them to be on X side or, you know, a this side plan which forces the enemy team into a bit of an awkward situation. So there's, you know, a lot of factors at play that we don't know, and the teams obviously will not tell us because they, <laughs> this game coming up on Sunday is bloody important for them. Yeah, I think actually it's Monday, these guys. Place. I, I believe Eminem versus uh, Resolve Academy is our first semi. It's on the Sunday. Is Monday just not the final? Oh, yeah, I forget. It, I, it's We got two games on thing. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Ignore then the Monday is the I'm, final. I'm, I'm a big doofus. I forget our own schedule. It's London sad, to go mate. for it. Yeah. It's sad, but it is the end of the UKLC this I Monday. I, I'm, I'm just trying to mentally draw it out as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, trying to make it longer. Um, but yeah, London going for this lay invade. Now, Envision do have full information on this. They do know that it's going on. Uh, so we'll see exactly what Juanitas wants to do about it. Because his Gear Leash himself did start on the blue much faster. So you're going to see he's finished up the blue already, whilst no name already uh, still on the red. So it's going to give Juanitas a little bit of additional time uh, or tempo in the jungle to go and make that crossover play, but if No Name does go red to red, could be an issue, but it looks like it's gonna make a stop on the Raptor, so there won't be too much of a problem then. It looks like we're just gonna end up in a cross map. This does mean, though, we expect No Name to kind of lean a little bit more towards the top lane. Jonatis is gonna have a harder job dealing with a fresh Karma. It's gonna be a pretty safe lane to handle. So even with the numbers advantage, I feel that it's going to be pretty hard to find any real, real push. But DBL, you can see, playing respectful now to Akers. Akers has got himself a level advantage as well. So the lane in his favor and DBL just getting zoned off. We'll hit that level two mark. But as the wave slowly builds up and works his way in, we might see some shenanigans onto DBL. Yeah, I think if London were looking to try and make a dive happen on the stacked wave, you would have liked to have DBL a little more chunked out. But it looks like with the wave stacked, they're still certainly considering it. No name not moving from that brush. Yeah, it looks like this will be the call. We're going to get the dive. DBL still level two. I'm not sure if he's got the hook shot on. We're even seeing the teleport oh, coming from Beely. Bring in Beely and they slow DBL down. Teleport's coming in as well. And that is going to yeah. be first blood. Picked Ooh, they up can redive. Backers. They can redive. Looking to try and turn it around. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, the flash, the hook onto the minion. It's not good enough. Jornatis comes back and Mankey oh, finds oh. the hook. That is the jump onto <gasps> Jornatis. He's able to jump away with the Lunar Rush. Meanwhile, in the top lane, faded. Didn't have to burn a single summoner spell. No name burnt his. But it's going to be all she wrote there. Yeah. They like robbery. One just gets out of that without flashing, to be honest. And they did a really good job of locking him down underneath the tower. First part does go off to London. No one love it. Hook, do you? Again, everything he jumps in. He's trying to get the damage onto Jeppe, but realistically, not a lot. It's Fuyu going low. London playing out their mind on this weak side bot lane. Yeah, absolutely. Almost take out Juan Assist in the 2v3 and then even find a little bit of additional pressure onto Fuyu. Fuyu doesn't oh, want to flash. Oh, what was that hook? These hook champions, man. <laughs> it's not he balanced, is it? No, Hebe was walking up, but he didn't quite have enough mana as well to uh, cast the death sentence. So these guys, despite being on the weak side... Uh, oh, come on! These hooks are not right. Jeppe burning low, but he won't be going down as Manky able to keep him alive. Yu jumps in one more time, but the um, tether's going to connect and the minions are going to force him to flash because he would have died. Old Stone's now also low. These hooks from Old Manky. Stones are... Manky, Q flash. No? I think he's waiting for Mantra just to make sure. I guess, yeah. I mean, yeah. These I hooks are very, very interesting. I agree. Um, oh. No, no, it's just the damage looks big, doesn't it? So it, it does make you feel 
Uh, no Name, however, is actually on the top side of the map, so you could see him rotate up off the back of his Gromp because this wave is kind of in an awkward position. DBL, he wants to crash it. You can see he's trading really aggressively to try and do so. The trading power back is just a little bit too high, and I don't think he's gonna be able to get the wave crash, and there's No Name. Yeah, here he comes. The kick is gonna land, and DBL gets himself the shield off for the moment, but the slow comes down, and Akers gives him the old snip snip to secure the kill. That's two top side. Max Sweat playing off massively well here for the side of London. Yeah, executing perfectly. No name camping his former top laner. Doesn't want him to have fun in this tiebreaker. And uh, that's gonna be another wave. Technically lost to DBL, of course. One assist here to pick it up, but as to Camille falling behind in this matchup, I'm talking about Camille, you wanna be a strong side lane threat when one of the other best side lane scaling champions in the game at the moment falling behind it can feel almost futile to play out the side lane if you start to fall behind you have to start considering dropping waves dropping the tower trying to make it to other parts of the map to start to roam maybe have your impact be felt elsewhere because if you don't get to play out this 1v1 you'll start to feel very very bad not gonna find a hook no, uh, we have the dragon up for a while, and you know, with No Name leaning there, I kind of expected Jonasis to see if he could set it up. But I think London's bot lane has just been able to have, honestly play so fantastically here that it's costing them. As a few and Old Stone's gonna eat that inspired in a flame as the hook goes a little bit wide. Yeah, but actually, Fader's mid lane priority. I don't know if he exactly knows. He's just getting the plot, so. Uh... He's going to see the rest of London show up. And Jeffy yeah, comes in, gets himself the jump back. Beely has the moon full. And it is just not faded stays. He fades out of existence and back to the gray screen. Jeffe lands oh. the hook, goes in to pull it back. Beely still has that moon full, but they're not going to pull it onto Jonatis. Yeah, hey. These hook, honestly, Old Sons and Jeffe, hats off to them. They are both playing these hook champions fantastically well. Yeah, absolutely. Jeffe known for his thrash, right? Uh, as far as supports go, Thresh and Norless both. His hooks have been very stellar when he's on these two champions. Old Stones. So actually, same thing can be said about him. And has been one of the sort of silent, or depends on how you look at the games, but to me, one of the silent reasons Envision have found so much success when it comes to playmaking. Yeah. You know, and I think I might have put Jeffe as my number one support in the. Uh... That is an incorrect opinion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't remember. I'll have to check. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I'm going to be doing a tier list after this, after this tiebreaker. Uh, oh, no, I I'll didn't. Be... No, I didn't. Yeah, I'll, I'll, surpri I'll be surprised if you did. Um... I put... Uh... Oh, no, I did put him at the top. It oh. just auto-corrected to Kepler. <laughs> Sorry, don't ask. <laughs> All right, I, I, I won't. Uh, now, Envision... I just, that, apparently, that's what the... I don't, what is Kepler? I don't know. I don't know what Kepler is. Uh, Wait, isn't it and, that? And I'm gonna I'm gonna stop saying the word in case there's some weird like curse in a random language. Okay, I'm gonna check actually. I was like, hold on. <laughs> but uh, it's the like for a second. Envision we're gonna try and eye up this herald. They do sit currently mm. one and a half thousand gold down. Uh, so skirmishing could be a little bit hard. But right now, whilst no item completions are actually in, they still have a decent window to uh, contest with some of these objectives as long as they've got decent wave states. But Seems like London. No name walks up here, kind of nonchalantly. Beely's going to be found with a hook. Yeah, Beely has been found. He's going low. Avis will flash away. Ooh. But the abs gone and Faded chasing him down. Teleport's coming in as Akers joins into the fray. The new works on. Faded trying to find the escape as he's able to do so with the portal jump to safety. And would you like to know? Oh, no, you won't. Play. I think that's all she wrote. Jonathan comes in actually, and a moonfall comes down. Oh, no what name. A turn by London, a double kill picked up for no name. Yeah, well earned. Well earned double kill for no name there. Great kick. His turnaround is absolutely massive. And now Fuyu, he had Ooh. pretty poor trade. Karma is just better than most AD carries. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, Fuyu, I think he's dead. He has to bust the shot, but Mankey Flash not going to follow up. And we can have a moment of calm. See, that's what Would you like to know what Kepler is? You go on. It's uh, Jonas Kepler. He is a uh, astronomer from German, um, from Germany. Sorry, yeah, he from Germany. lived in 1571 to 1630, and he was best known for his. He was the one that discovered his three laws on the of planetary motion. 
Also, that's what Kepler is. We now know. That sounds like one of the people that found out the Earth wasn't flat. Because <laughs> that was a, like that was a I thing mean, yeah. for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. I think the Earth is flat. I think he is. That a actually flat sounds Earth's worst if, nightmare. If, if, if it's like the. <laughs> Yeah, no, because I think, um... Because, like, in my spare time, I watch a bunch of, like, random science videos and, like... It's History-type videos when it comes to stuff like this. And I feel like around that time period was when they were still coming out of, Hey, uh... <laughs> don't think the Earth's flat, guys. Granted, uh, who was it that actually originally thought that it wasn't... And then got executed because he was seen as a pagan? <laughs> I... D what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was a, it was a religious thing. There's like, there's no way. Oh, uh, by the way, Akers is maybe. Oh, Akers is getting multi-man jumped in. Is able to buy the time and able to get away. Um, interesting fact, by the way. Mm -hmm. I don't get to speak this game because Mankey is killing Fuyu, and uh, actually well, no it's name No Name yeah. who's killing Fuyu. And Comes in with the ward hop, gets the slowdown, the flay's there, and Fuyu taken out. No Name five zero on the Lee Sin. Yep. It's got the um. Rift Herald in his pocket. It's pretty fat. Ball drinker at 11 minutes. It's, uh, it's a scary Lee Sin. And it's not top lane Lee Sin either that maxes E and kind of has not as scary all in potential. It's that jungle Lee Sin that maxes Q. Connects that Sonic Wave, you're going to lose a lot of your health bar. Very Kepler is also a on. telescope. <laughs> yes. It's one of our space telescopes. The VR yeah, replay guy told me that one. I just double checked. It is one of the ones that floats around in space. Yeah, I knew it sounded familiar. It surveys the Milky Way. Surveys. surveys. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> so. Dragon goes down. That's the second one. We'll see yeah, what Jake. this Rift Elder's going to get picked up as. Uh, you know what we're talking about? Where, you know, this could negatively affect one of the team's confidence. Uh huh. You were 11 minutes in with six kills. Yeah. And a pretty substantial gold lead, and the Rift Dale's about to make that gold lead even bigger in the mid lane as uh, Akers is getting jumped onto by Jornatis. Maybe they can find the kill. He's able to dodge away from the stun for the moment as Akers has got the teleport to buy himself some time and bring some friends as the Moonfall comes down. And Akers is holding his life for the moment. They're going to kill Jornatis, and Akers is still oh not dead. No. Beely finds the knockup as DBL tries to chase as Akers slides back oh. in. Double kill for Beely. Meanwhile, Fuyu being hunted down by Mankey. He just needs to find that inner flame and the <gasps> flash. Fuyu with the outplay. <laughs> Perfect game is in shambles. And London are tilted. London are tilted, but uh, let's see if no, no name. No, he's not going to be able to get any revenge here. Still has the Herald in his pocket. He's got just under a minute left on that. Get a replay of the top side fight, and it's all about some of the CC. The key CC that misses the hook shot doesn't connect, doesn't find a stun. Uh, the teleport comes down, and there's not really much LCC to lock down Akers at all, so he's able to put in all of this damage. The Leeching Lear gives him a whole bunch of HP back, even though he's ignited. Bonatus drops below Kingslayer execution threshold, and then you see Akers comes back in with the true damage again with the Leeching Lear. Kills him back up to not actually get executed off the back of an aura attack. And uh, for you, just a nice flash. Nothing else to say about that play. And there was a bad flash by Jeppe during that replay. He tried to flash on Faded, and Faded was not having any of it. He just walked away. Plates do get picked up, though, and the gold lead remains. 4,000, 5,000 right now for the side of London at 13 minutes. A lot of items coming in. The Leeching Lear almost got that uh, Rift Maker finished up for Rackers. Gore Drinker onto No Name. Moonstone on the way for the side of Mankey. Could be a shrimp. Jonatis once again trying it top lane. I mean, but Akers actually has the needlework now. So a 2v1, very reasonable if you ask me. Yeah, as long as he dodges away on the stun, he's able to do so for a little bit. His teleports are coming in and backups coming down. Mankey's going to be the first one here and Fady gets slowed by that final needlework. Meanwhile, oh. bot lane for you getting kicked back as No Name chasing in. They've got the slow No Name. Gore Drinker Hill misses oh. the Q. <laughs> Beely will take out for you though with the King Slayer. And No Name recovers a little bit of his pride and finds himself the kill. 10 to 1. 11 kills in 14 minutes this game. And first tower oh. of the game will fall here. First tower will fall. Uh. And Vision aren't looking too hot right now. London been playing it pretty damn well. If you ask me, No Name's been very, very proactive. Found a lot of opportunity off that map split in the early game. Hook, yeah, all right. Okay. 
<laughs> our observer's in a, in a bad mood, I can tell. Uh, no name, missed out both the Sonic Waves, but it doesn't matter, because you can just run them down with red buff, Billy, left alone with Fuyu, or old AD carry with no summoner spells or a rocket jump. Two more easy pickups. And at this point, you know, normally when you get to 15 minutes and one team's like clearly behind them, one team's clearly ahead, I do like to talk about how teams can come back into it. For Envision right now, it's all the you just gotta wait and just pray. Hope that London yeah. don't don't end the game in the next 10 minutes. Uh, but if you're London, keep on doing what you're doing. Good oh, Akers. Oh, Akers. The CC is big. He dodges away for the moment. Jornatis is coming in. The hook is going to land. And Akers, can he sustain? No need to work available. He's trying to slice. He's trying to jump away. Jornatis can't quite connect the damage. Meanwhile, DBL um, getting jumped onto. No name. Landed the kick, but missed the other kick. Flay comes in from DBL and Beely trying to run him down with that abscond and abduct. So London get a kill on the top side and their top laner somehow survives on the other side of the map. Yeah, kind of crazy. Uh, somehow Akers managed to survive that one. Didn't have the needlework at hand either. So it's just Envision not having enough damage even to uh, take care of Akers. Some of the healing as well return. Just too much to deal with, even at this early stage. And it's only going to get worse. That's the, <laughs> that's the poor thing about it. It's only going to get worse. So uh, hopefully, for Envision's sake, they can uh, find a way to pull this back. But right now, it is looking mighty doomed. And they just have to kind of pray they can find some picks. But the issue is there's so many teleports available to London that the windows are going to be so small more often than not. Try, for go, try to go for Akers. Well, if you don't do it in the next 60 seconds, Beely's going to have teleport. If you don't go for someone else, then Akers is going to come in as a teleport as well. Looks like they're going to go for a play in the mid lane. This is kind of the last chance to loon. Now they're bringing them in. They've got the teleports coming down. Beely trying to survive as long as possible. The charge from the Rift Herald will not be cancelled. And the fight is on. The Moonfall is there. For you, launches in. But No Name is godlike. And London are ripping through everybody on Envision. Somehow multiple members survive, but the hook from downtown and Beely will head the charge 5-0 and o now on the Silas with no name, 8-0 and o on the Lee Sin. They don't have the Rift Herald, but I don't think that even matters to them right now. They can take this tower. Did you tiebreakers count as the regular season? Uh, I think so. Can we, can we get a double check on that from uh, from admin? Because I want to know, because we're, we're maybe eyeing up the fastest game of the split at the moment. Uh, Envision, credit to them, they tried. They're trying to be proactive, but quite frankly, too far behind. Fight a little too scattered uh, from their front. But to be honest, you kind of expect it when you've got things like Camille, when you've got things like Tristana Rise. You're not always trying to play straight up front to back. So with a team composition like this, when you've got you know, two divers, two champions that want to play front to back, you're going to be all over the place. Not quite able. Uh, to find an angle that works for them. Unfortunately, it sees them almost 10,000 gold down. And for London, a very well executed game plan here. Uh, and right now, looking like the far superior team uh, in this tiebreaker. And it was, if I do believe correctly, London, obviously, that had the opp opportunity in particular to obviously, or the option to play out this game. Uh, and it seems like it's going to pay them heavy dividends. Oh, Jordan Tess, you're getting jumped onto. No name. Finds the kick. The smite will sustain him for now, but Beely may just chase over the wall. He's got no name in his pocket, and Jordan yeah. Tess might buy a bit of time, but the Everfrost will pull him in, and Beely will take him down. They got the lantern as well to get back over that wall as Beely steals away a couple of Krugs. Yeah. Envision, uh. Looking like we're waiting till Sunday to see Envision show. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I don't think this is because they got a new mid laner. No, I, that this, this faded. Doesn't sure, have he's much now to do zero with, three. Uh, player to player. No, I, I this sure faded zero three, but that's kind of more just a side effect of the fact that No Name got really fed and a really really smart map split from the side of London when they knew that their bot lane were going to be really safe and they could just constantly dive DBL and then that that lead was then translated across the map and it's now put. Envision in this state where they, they, they need to find an answer. I think the thing is, the issue with their draft is there's not really an answer. As okay, Fuyu loses oh. half his HP, Sonic Wave in the knee, plus a Gold Drinker proc. Uh, again, it's not the uh, 
What's the, uh, I'm trying to think of the meme. You know, because you get like Chad, okay, and that holds bones. Hmm? Knock up onto a couple of members into the hook. Remember, no name is worth 1,000 gold if you can kill him, but Jeffe landing his own hook and faded, eating a kick. Everfrost connects, they're just poking and prodding. As a turret thinking will about. fall. Yeah, no name does have a wave of him on the bottom side. I don't know how big it is. Uh, is a cannon, but Ryze will be able to clear most of this out pretty quickly unless they just outright dive him. Oh, they're just jumping in onto No Name. He hops to the lantern and faded. Once again, the needlework is going to kick in and they are going to throw everything onto DBL. Beely is godlike. London are a force to be reckoned with in this game. And Envision probably going to have to go back and think about their plans for this Sunday and how they're going to be able to handle. Just such a dominating team. Yeah, this is purely team to team. This doesn't really have much to do with players. This is London executing a game plan right here and doing it damn good. 21 minutes, two inhibitors, 12,000 gold lead. This is an FF game. This is a... <laughs> they are one this tower is... and one kill off this being a perfect game. Yeah. Yeah, this is a... If it was a scrim, it would have been remade 10 minutes ago. Um, so, it's entirely like you say, Mankey's fault, by the way. Yeah, entirely Mankey's fault. No, this is an effort. It's giving a... You know you always have those two people on your solo queue team, which just believe the game is winnable. Oh, no, 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 let me, let me rephrase. You get the one person that always votes no because they want to waste your time. And then you have another person that always believes any game is winnable. That's right now. <laughs> but uh, of course... Uh, jokes aside, looks like London will start the Baron. And this should be all it takes. Uh, I don't really think they need the Baron anyway, but always better safe than sorry. Monetus, I'm going to get bullied out of the jungle. Supports me in the top side as well. Seems like they want to try and kill all the stones, but just focus up on the Baron. Oh, they're looking for this Baron. I don't think there's going to be any opportunity to try and steal it away. Billy jumps in. He has the Moonfall as well, and he's not even going to use it. That's the pop. That's the damage. London are just dotting their eyes and crossing their T's, teleporting into the base. Fee is trying to catch the wave, but he's going to get zoned off by Mankey as he actually flashes from Billy coming in. Can't quite find himself a Tristana. The teleport will come through, and... They've got Baron, they've got the wave, and I don't think Faded's got the damage to be able to handle this. This is well and truly game as Faded teleports to the bot side of the map. He knows this is over. London, in honestly the most dominating form, are going to take themselves the win as it is a cheeky little insect from Fuyu. 22 minutes on the clock, and that's game. No Name had 100% kill participation in that game. What? He was involved in every single kill on the Lee Sin. Uh, and it's why I'm not going to call him a legacy Lee Sin player because he's still very young. Uh, and he's only been around, at least in the UK, yeah. team for about a year and a half now. Uh, but yes, this is what happens when No Name gets Lee Sin and he's got a whole bunch of comfortable lanes to, to play around. So that was, I think, I honestly think he got really fed off just incredibly smart decision. They went for that match split, they knew where the Diana was starting. And I think the draft, they had a clear game plan with that draft and they played straight into it. And that kind of preparation is probably a very scary thing for Envision because how many more kind of wacky comps have they got in mind and how many more kind of game plans do they have? It's a quick one. It's a quick day, but we're not going to call it there. We are actually going to get Jamada to run us through the drawing board and his favorite play from that game.